Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today we're making a pink champagne cake tutorial. Now, to be honest, I don't really know what pink champagne is because I never drank it, but I know that it's going to be super beautiful. I just have a piece of wood today that I'm covering with some fondant. The reason that I chose wood is because I know this cake is going to be fairly heavy, so I need something really supportive. A little bit of shortening, and then just flatten your fondant on top. I made this cake ahead of time to save me time right now, which is fabulous because I have a very busy day today, but I want this to stay super moist. So as you just saw, I poured some simple syrup on top. Firstly, what I'm doing is cutting down the sides and then I am just kind of sketching in what I think the bottle should look like with my knife first. Once I've decided that that looks good, then I'm making the actual cuts. Now, if you want this to be perfect, perfect, then go ahead and cut out a piece of printed paper and then you can just trace it really easily. I don't know why, but I have this thing where I try not to use as many tracers as possible, which is kind of silly because there's no prize for not using a tracer. As you can see, there's no rule to carving cakes. I'm adding on this little piece because I want to elongate that bottle, and I'm just adding whatever I see fit. If this was a stacked cake where it was actually 3D and standing, I'd be a little bit more careful about how I'm adding things, but this is just going to lay flat. I'm using my favorite Italian meringue buttercream recipe in the description box below. With carved cakes like this, I generally do a really, really nice thick layer of frosting since there's only one layer. A little bit of sprinkles to go with the Funfetti cake. And another splash of that simple syrup, which is just going to add flavor and moisture to the cake. Crumb coat as usual. and place this in your fridge for about 30 minutes. I wanna round off this bottle a bit, so I'm just shaving off the edges that are really nice and straight. Now I'm using the buttercream to kind of build up and round out everything. This tool, which I actually got from the Cookie Countess, is really great for rounding out the edges of buttercream. My fondant did not arrive in time, unfortunately, so I'm kind of just improvising here, and I only have a very, very little bit of pink fondant left. So as you can see, when I cover this, I'm not getting the best coverage, but it's all good because I was planning on using a lot of florals anyway. This next part might seem a little bit intimidating, but really all I did was directly lift my cake off of the board and put it onto my actual cake board that I'm going to be serving this on. Make sure you do this fairly quickly because if you don't, your fondant might crack when you transfer it over. Right now I'm going in with my fingers and creating kind of that foil texture. If you've refrigerated your cake for a sufficient amount of time, then you don't have to be too gentle with that process. Right now I am making a rose and I used my rose petal cutter, which is a fabulous cutter. I suggest you go out and get one right now. It kind of looks like a cloud when you get it. And then I'm using my balling tool and a foam mat to just kind of make that edge look really realistic. Oh my goodness, I've made roses in so many of my tutorials and I'm happy that about 70% of this is being shown in the frame. With all of my florals, I'm just steaming my cake and then adhering them on really, really super easily. If you don't have a steamer, you can easily use water. I'm placing on various flowers in different mediums, some royal icing flowers, which I made earlier, and a large flower made out of wafer paper. I'm painting on some gold with just a little bit of luster dust mixed with some vodka. 
If you're noticing the gold isn't as strong as you would like it to be, then you might need to add a little bit more powder, or it can also be the formula that you're using. If you're in the middle of a project like this though, my suggestion is you just paint on one layer, let it dry, and then paint on more. Now I'm just creating the sticker that goes around the top of the bottle, and this is just done with a pastry cutter and some rolled fondant. I love the pastry cutter because it makes sure that the lines are equal. I'm using navy blue today only because I ran out of black, so I'm actually going back in and coloring it with some vodka mixed with edible black paint. Doing it this way actually gives your fondant a little bit of a sheen, which really works in this case. What's great about this cake is it's all about bubbly champagne, so if you make any mistakes or you want to cover any little imperfection, you can just use white chocolate six slits like I did to build on that. I started off by using an edible pen, but I really did not like it. I just bought it the other day and it doesn't seem to be going on that well. However, I think I'm going to give it another chance because my fondant is a little bit wet from being steamed. Painting this crown is really fine detail work, so what I'm doing is I put my forearm against my cake stand to steady myself. A few last finishing details and make sure that this gold dries before you give it to your client or your loved one. This cake definitely gives me kind of wedding shower vibes or just someone's birthday. This is a very versatile type of cake. You could even make this a little bit more streamlined. Don't add any florals or pearls and just leave the bottle as is. Thanks so much for watching guys, don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading daily so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!